Aha, wunderbar. So, YouTube, we meet at last. I am Paul, I'm an illustrator, I am a art teacher here in Vilnius. And today I thought we could be drawing this piece of broken bone. It's a jaw from a cow, I believe, and I found it in the Georgian mountains. It has very, very interesting uneven shape and form. So I made a little setup for myself and uh, I will comment. Ideally, I would have done it in real time except the video is about half an hour, which is a little bit tedious if you're not used to the process. So we're going to go through it about two, three times faster. Let's get to it. So the first thing I will be looking for when I have a steel object, especially an organic form, is the shape it has, it will have on the paper. So what kind of outline we're looking for, how regular or irregular those uh, shapes are, and the certain organicity. I like to, when, when I teach, I like to talk about the line quality that you will have so for example this broken piece of bone is pretty rugged and so the way you hold your pencil to draw can be a bit ruggedy the other thing is in terms of design you see that the left part has um there's a, there's a larger shape on the left side then you have a medium shape and then a very small one so i like to keep that in mine just for the compositional aspect of it so here i'm going back through the contour i don't have to do that this is <laughs> people know me or remember me as someone who works with the lines a lot and so i'm trying to work actively outside of this confined nowadays but i like this precision work sort of See here, I'm going again through all this, this almost um, topographical uh, understanding of the form. So at some point when all your outlines are solid, there comes a decision to take, which is whether you go through the occlusion shadows, which is the darkest dark, or you start separating the light side from the dark side. So here I went into a little bit of both, as you can see, but most, most uh, clearly between the teeth, uh, uh, I started really working on the occlusion shadows. And on the top side, I started delineating a little bit the light and the shadow, but because this piece is so white, so bright, it wasn't that clear what was in light or what was in shadow whereas the as you can see the the little dents where it gets very dark were way more interesting to separate teeth from the bone and here i go through the cracks that are on top of the bone The teeth themselves have um, some sort of a rounded uh, curve to it inside. It's like mammal teeth. So they are here to eat, to, to chew the grass. So going indiscriminately through the light, the shadows, and this little notches the good thing when you have a broken piece or anything that is irregular or organic is that there's larger leeway in terms of um, 
mistakes you can make or just a little bit of deviation from the exact proportion of things. I don't think anyone will come and tell me like, hey, look, this tooth was a little bit more to the left, to the right. It doesn't really matter as long as the, well, the general outline feels correct. And also something I'm very, uh, I'm very uh, sensitive to is how the form came to be. So some elements are broken post-mortem, which is like once the piece of bone was already out of the animal and some might have been already during the animal's lifetime. Some have been broken quite violently. Some have been just becoming brittle and just like uh, fell off the bones. Some things came from environmental stress. For example, maybe this piece of bone had been through winter. And so all of those have their own different characteristics. They, they bring a different texture, which I think is very important and very interesting to pay attention to and equally to think um, how you're going to resolve it with the pencil. So here I just go back and forth through all these little uh, nooks and crannies. Again, because the bone was very bleached, not artificially, but I found it. So <laughs> it might confirm that it's been through a few seasons in the sun, in the mountain, so the UV index is higher. And so this whiteness is, makes it a little bit tricky to, to deal with. And you need those clear occlusion shadows to separate all the more these different elements. But I like to think that the results speak for itself. Pretty edgy where it should be, pretty sharp where it should be. And then on the surface, there's just a, bit, a little bit more looseness to it. So here I go through the soft cavities in the teeth. And once I'm done with my contour, it doesn't have to be that's like almost um, surgically precise. I like that. This is just personal preference. Now I'm actually uh, blocking the shadow which could have been done in the beginning when I was blocking in the shape itself. But this is more to set this, uh, my, my model, my subject on the paper. And I go through to fill in and to just get darker where it should be, which is again where occlusion happens, where the light can uh, enter the least so under the teeth and wherever the gum used to be thank you very much for watching